where to go, what to see, where to stay, what to wear, what car to rent, and what are the drone rules for Faroe Islands. In this video, I will try to answer some of the most commonly asked questions about the Faroe Islands. So where to stay in the Faroe Islands? There are a lot of Airbnb and hotels in the Faroe Islands and since the Faroe Islands are so small it's fairly easy to drive around and get to the different locations and just stay in one location. I personally prefer to stay in just one location and that one location is the one which is closest to the locations I prioritize as sunrise locations. Then I don't have to get out of bed too early. So in regard to where to stay, I personally prefer one location, which is a practical one, close to the locations I want to photograph first and foremost. The next question you probably want answered is how to get around. And I personally really prefer to just have a car. There are plenty of rental car companies up here in the Faroes. So there's a lot to choose from. And depending on what budget, you can get basically everything. Car rental in the Faroe Islands, as with everything else in the Faroe Islands, is a little bit more expensive than in a lot of other countries. But the good thing is that the infrastructure up here in the Faroe Islands is very good. The road conditions are very, very good. Unless it's like really a blizzard winter, which it rarely is, you can actually get around with the smallest possible car you can rent. Obviously, you need to take into consideration how much luggage you have yourself, but generally a small car, in my opinion, is the way to go because sometimes some of the roads become fairly small and you do not want one of those big luxury cars if you want to go far out and explore the Faroe Islands. In the Faroe Islands, there are tunnels which cost a fee of 100 Danish crowns for a return ticket. Some car rental companies offer to pay your tunnel fees in advance for a certain amount of money. Personally, I always accept this offer as I pass the tunnels quite often. You will have to make the math yourself if it makes sense for you. As you can probably imagine, the weather is not always this good in the Faroe Islands. And as you can also see right now, it is probably a little bit windy. Or maybe you can hear it on my microphone. Now, the Faroes are known for rain and wind, so expect that no matter how long you stay up here. But the weather changes a lot in the Faroe Islands. Like Iceland, the weather changes a lot, but in the Faroes it changes even more, which means you should basically expect everything. Everything from rain and hail and clear skies to a lot of wind to major storms to almost no wind you can experience fog and low hanging clouds and so forth up here the weather just changes a lot so obviously you have to wear clothing that matches that weather generally i always say if you go for hikes if you go out to enjoy nature which i expect you to do if you're watching this one it's because you're interested in photography always 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 wear proper hiking boots and wear waterproof hiking boots it is just so important even though it might not have rained for several days the ground is usually pretty wet when you walk in the hills or on the trails generally also just wear more or less waterproof clothing it is wet up here and chances that you will be hit by a shower are pretty big even though it's clear weather like today, it could change in an hour. Just wear practical outdoor clothing. Don't wear sneakers when you go for a hike. Generally, when it comes to jackets and what to wear here, wear layers. If you go on a hike, you're probably sweaty when you start photographing and you want to get that wet layer off because that is really what gets to you. That's what makes you cold. That's the wetness and the moist that your body produces. 
inside. And standing still for a couple of hours photographing, it really fast becomes really cold. Generally during summer, the weather is also warmer, but contrary to popular belief, the Faroe Islands is not super cold during winter. They are in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There are no land to stop all the weather systems. This is why the weather changes as much as it does. So during summer, the temperature is averagely more or less 10 degrees warmer than it is averagely during winter. It is also extremely important that you take care of yourself. As I've already mentioned, bring proper footwear, hiking boots and so forth. These mountains, these places can often be very, very wet and it is easy to slip and fall down. And at a location like this, which is one of the most famous tourist locations, if you fall down here, you die. Like there's no coming back up. And there are people up here, both tourists and locals, who do fall down and who, who does die. And it is an absolutely catastrophe for the families. So just take care of yourself and don't do anything which looks dangerous. Just remember your brain. In regard to what to see and where to go, I would highly suggest to watch all my old Faroe Islands videos, they are still basically up to date. There has become a few restrictions to some of the locations since, but in general it is way easier just to show you all those videos, all those locations, instead of telling you about it in this video. So in regard to what gear to bring, I would highly suggest to just bring everything. Lenses that cover the focal length from 16mm all the way up to 200mm, should be sufficient. Bring filters, neutral density filters, especially polarizers, can make a difference on blue sky days like this. It also removes glare from all the water and all the streams which are up here. It comes highly recommended to have a camera which is durable in bad weather, so some kind of weather sealing is good. Many of the semi-professional Canon cameras, Nikon cameras, even the Sony cameras now, Olympus are pretty good with the weather sealing. Also bring a backpack which has some kind of rain cover or a waterproof backpack, whatever works for you. Just remember that it rains quite a lot up here and the ground can be very wet too. There are of course also rules in regard to where you can fly your drone up here in the Faroe Islands. And the rules are fairly simple. The two main things you need to be aware of is that you have to be at least five kilometers away from the airport here on Vaga. That means that, as an example, you can't fly your drone at Trelanipa. It's simply too dangerous because the planes do get fairly close to the ground when they are arriving to the Faroes. Also, you need to be at least 150 meters away from any settlement or town. There are more rules and I would highly suggest to read them on visitfaroeislands.fo. Another extremely important rule you will have to adhere to is not to disturb and stress the wildlife. During mating and summer season there are many many birds all over the pharaohs. The drones stress out the chickens and young birds and they might fall from the nests. So be very cautious not to get close to the birds and especially their nests. So contrary to Iceland and Norway and parts of the UK there are no free roaming laws up here in the Faroe Islands. That means that whatever land you're walking on is basically privately owned and the farmers or the landowners can do with it what they want to do. And that includes charging a price for entering their property. Right now you already have to pay a fee and a guide to go to the famous sea stack, the Ranganir. And as of 2019, the spring here, I guess high season come, you will also have to pay to go to Trelanipa, which is probably the most famous location beside Gazadalur. I do get a lot of questions in regard to all these restrictions, where to go, where you're allowed to go, can you go there, do you need a guide and so forth. And I honestly can't give you a proper answer because it is changing all the time. There's a lot of rumors and it will especially change here do, during 2019. All I can say is keep an eye on visitfaroeislands.fo 
that is where you can see the most recent news in regard to those restrictions. You can always send them a mail and I'm sure they will be happy to answer your questions. So when is the best time to go to the Faroe Islands? That question, in my opinion, doesn't make any sense because it utterly depends on what you want. As a photographer, be aware that where the sun rises and sets dependent on the time of year. From summer solstice to winter solstice, there's a 120 degree difference. We are so far north that the sun does not set directly in east and west as it does closer to equator. This has a huge impact on how a specific photography location is being perceived. Depending on what you want, you will have to prepare from home when the sun is in a direction during sunset or sunrise, if that's what you want, which is desirable for your vision as a photographer. Also during summer, starts May all the way through October, the grass is just greener. It's green grass. The rest of the year, the grass is more golden and brown. This also has a huge impact on your photos. So the weather does change a lot and it has a huge impact on your photography. So when is the best time? I can't say, that's utterly up to you. You will have to prepare from home when the sun is in the directions you want to take the photographs that you want. There are plenty of groceries where you can do your shopping for food, but there are also plenty of restaurants. In my opinion, go to the small restaurants. They are super fun, they are super cozy, and especially like a location here in Gaza da Lua, I would highly suggest to actually support the local economy and the local small settlements and whatever they do for the tourists because right now Gaza de Lua is free, it might not be in the future. Let's cross our fingers and let's just show the locals that we actually enjoy coming here. If you want to know more about where to go in the Faroe Islands, I would highly suggest for you to buy access to my MyMaps map. You can see it down in the description below. It's only $20 and I'm updating it regularly with new locations whenever I get up here and photograph and explore something new, which does happen from time to time throughout the year. Already now there are plenty of locations and more than enough for one or two weeks of photography up here. So thank you so much for watching. I hope I got to answer some of the most commonly asked questions in this video. And I hope you will get to enjoy these beautiful, beautiful islands. At least from my side, they come highly recommended.